Okay, discrete math class. Very, very quick video um, just to wrap up what we were doing today because what we were doing, uh, we put a lot of effort in and we ended like with like one minute left. So, what is going on? <coughs> we have the axioms for a finite projective plane. Just to quickly recap, um, a finite projective plane is any geometry which satisfies the following axioms. Um, through any two distinct points, there is a line, and in fact, there's exactly one line. Through any two distinct lines, there's exactly one point, um, which uh, rules out uh, a particular configuration, which is the configuration in which two distinct lines, um, L and M say, meet at two distinct points. That cannot happen. And it is a powerful way of um, creating a, a, a contradiction in one of your proofs to show that indeed two distinct lines meet at two distinct points. Uh, if that comes up, then you have a contradiction because that in fact cannot happen. Uh, good, uh, and as we talked about in class, this, this, uh, the value of FPP1 is that if you have two points, uh, you can sort of, by FPP1, create the line through them. And FPP2 says if you have two lines, you can create, so to speak, or it must exist, uh, a point uh, that those two lines share. Um, but for the purposes of doing proof, uh, for, of doing proofs, FPP1 and FPP2 um, aren't as uh, uh, powerful or something as FPP3. FPP3 is the one that um, sort of seeds your uh, model with some uh, objects. Um, these special four distinct points, these core four, no three of which are on a common line. Uh, all right, and we set out to prove that there exist four distinct lines, no three of which contain a common point. So that there are some four special lines uh, somewhere in the model. There must be four lines, and uh, no three of them have a point in common. Okay, how did we do this? Um, the hard work is all kind of um, done already. I will move over here. Um, or at least the long work is done already. Can we all see from this picture? Sort of. Sure. Oh my god. Great camera work here. Yeah. Okay. So, here is what we did. You will recall. Uh, we uh, started with FPP1, FPP2, FPP3, and we set out to prove FPP3 prime. What is FPP3 prime? Uh, it's that there are these four lines somewhere, there must be four lines, um, no three of which have a point in common. Well, we suppose that it was false. Uh, in other words, we're supposing the negation of FPP3. And to help us think, we said that FPP3 um, uh, written out in a kind of pseudo-quantifier language is that there exist four special lines such that there are not three of those lines with a common point. And thus translated more into English by distributing the quantifier through um, what we have assumed, by assuming the negation of FPP3 prime, what we have assumed is that for any four lines whatsoever, there must be three of them with a common point. And this thing, which now has a pink box around it, this is the thing which is going to lead us to contradiction. The goal is to show that this thing in the, in the pink box is in fact false, and thus we, we sort of win, we win the proof. And what is this thing in, the, in, the, in this pink box? It says that for any four lines whatsoever, uh, we have assumed, uh, there must be three of those four that have a point in common. Okay. And it was at this point that we kind of stopped. We did not use this uh, sort of poison uh, assumption here that FPP3 prime is false. We didn't, uh, we didn't do anything with that yet until basically the bell was about to ring. And um, what we uh, uh, did uh, for about 15 long, uh, glorious minutes was uh, see how far we can get just by following FPP1, FPP2, and FPP3. What can we do? Well, FPP3 gives me the power to just create these four special points. Um, FPP3, has, FPP3 says, if it's a finite projective 
uh, plane, then there must be some special core four points called P1, P2, P3, and P4, which are all distinct and no three of which are on a common line. So we drew P1, P2, P3, and P4 like this, um, and we know that there's not a line that um, goes through uh, any three of them. We know that for sure. That's what FPP3 says. Um, well, we said we noted that these uh, six points are indeed all distinct from each other. We noted by uh, FPP3 that no three uh, of these points are collinear. We also noted, um, so this was this was sort of uh, this was sort of uh, step one was taking our, uh, 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 our four distinct points. Step two was noting that no three of which are collinear. Then we applied FPP1 to create the lines which we know must be there. And uh, we created six lines. And we drew those lines in. L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and L6. Now, uh, a more casual proof would simply be like, Come on, look, those are the lines. Come on, we can just trust our diagram. But the diagram is not part of the proof. The diagram is just there to help us think. And for the next sort of five minutes, all we did was to sort of justify that things actually are as the diagram uh, says they are. And no we noted that since P1 and P2 are on L1, for example, then the other two points are not on L1 because we know that uh, P1, P2, and P3 can't lie on a line, P1, P2, and P4 can't lie on a line, etc. So in every single one of the lines, L1 through L6, the two points that define that line, uh, the two points we use to create that line, I should say, uh, are on that line, and the other two points from my core four are not on that line. Uh, okay, that was our step three. At the conclusion of step three, oh no, not quite yet, then in step four, we said, okay, these six lines are in fact all distinct from each other. Uh, and why are these uh, six lines distinct? Um, because, for example, since P1 is on L1 uh, and P1 is not uh, on L2, um, which we showed above, then uh, these lines L1 and L2 must be different. In other words, L1 has a certain property, the property of going through P1, uh, but L2 does not have that property, and so these two lines can't be the same. Okay, skipping steps, because it's quite boring, there are 15 of these. What we eventually conclude is that, yeah man, all six of these lines are in fact distinct. Alright, and at the conclusion of all of this work, what we really, the sort of takeaway from all of this is, yes, we can really trust this picture. Every sort of feature of this picture now has been uh, rigorously uh, proven that we really do have four distinct lines, uh, uh, four distinct points, that we really do have six distinct lines, and essentially, among these four points and these six lines, no point, no, none of these points uh, which are not depicted on these lines are in fact on these lines, and all the lines are different. All right, so it's finally now time, and it was really uh, uh, at the moment that the bell basically rang that I uh, uh, started to do this, was to finally uh, invoke uh, this sort of poisoned assumption, uh, which is going to lead us to a contradiction. And the poisoned assumption is that for any four lines whatsoever, uh, there are three of them with a common point. Okay, well, if this is true for any four lines whatsoever, then uh, in particular, it should be true about lines L1, L2, L3, and L4. There was nothing special about L1, L2, L3, and L4, uh, but I just took those four. All right, and so um, what we now have, our assumption says that um, three of these lines must all meet at a point. Um, and what we need to do is show that that's impossible, that three of these lines meet at a point. Well, because of the total symmetry of this diagram, I claim that uh, without loss of generality, let me consider three of these lines. And what uh, our assumption has told us is that there must be three of them with a common point. So suppose it is L1, L2, and L3, which have a point in common. I, we're going to show that this is impossible. And if it's impossible for L1, L2, and L3 to have a point in common, 
Then it's also impossible for L1, L2, L4 to have a point in common. It's also impossible for L2, L3, L4 to have a point in common, etc. Okay, why is this impossible? Well, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw sort of a separate kind of diagram here. The diagram is that there is some point uh, that L1, L2, and L3 all have in common. That's what we've just supposed. This is, I say, impossible. Why is it impossible? Well, let's just sort of look at our picture over here. What do we see? We see that L1 and L3 meet at P1. Um, L2 and L3 meet at P3, but L1 doesn't go through P3. Uh, and uh, also L2 doesn't go through P1. And also, uh, what else? Um, uh, L3 doesn't go through P2. So in some sense, this point P can't be P1, P2, or P3. It's got to be some other point, because we already know uh, when it comes to points P1, P2, and P3 that um, uh, we don't have all three of these lines going through those points. In fact, in each uh, of those cases, one of the lines misses uh, P1, one of those lines misses P2, and one of these lines misses P3. So P has got to be some new point. Let me just uh, make that precise. In particular, um, uh, P cannot be P3 uh, because uh, it's simply the case that P3 is not on uh, L1. P is on L1, uh, but P3 is not on L1, and we have, uh, we have proved that. So P is definitely not P3. Well, if P is definitely not P3, then, and maybe now I'll just uh, sort of sort of redraw uh, uh, the picture, keeping only the parts of the picture that I need um, in frame. Uh, and the three things I need look like this. Here's P3. Uh, this is L2. This is L3. This is L1. This is P1. And this is P2. All right, so everything has kind of just been repeat up to now. Um, where is this point uh, P if it's not P3? Well, uh, what we now know about this point, uh, if it's not P3, then it must be some other place where these three uh, lines all uh, meet. Um, but that can't be because um, let's see, uh, what do I want to say? Oh, uh, so here, I will now say, um, wait a second, uh, do I want to draw this? Maybe I'll just write it out and then I'll decide what to draw. Um, so if P is not P3, then, um, so since uh, P is not P3, that means that I can make a line through those two points, P and P3, um, by FP, P1. Um, we have uh, a, a, a line, I'll just call it line P, P3. It is the line through P and P3. Um, but look, if P is on um, line L, um, three, <laughs> one second, yeah, P is on L3, uh, and uh, we also have that P3 um, is on L3, then the only conclusion is that um, the line PP3 is L3 that the line through P and P3 just is L3. Um, because FPP2 says, uh, or I guess it's FPP1, uh, which says that uh, through any two points, there is exactly one line. If P is on L3, and P3 is also on L3, um, then the only line through P and P3 is just the line uh, L3 itself. But also, um, we can make that same argument with L2. Uh, after all, P is on L2, P is this point which is supposedly on all three lines, and um, P3 uh, 
is on uh, L2. Um, and my conclusion, therefore, is that this, this line PP3 is also L2. Because through any two points, P and P3, there is exactly one line. And I know that uh, P and P3 uh, uh, are on L2, so the line through P and P3 is L2. But if the line through P and P3 is L3, and the line through P and P3 is L2, then my conclusion is L2 equals L3. Um, but that is a contradiction, because L2 does not equal L3. Um, another sort of way of putting this is for me to uh, sort of draw my point um, uh, P somewhere here in the center or something. And what do I know about P? I know that uh, it's on L1, L2, and L3. Okay, the problem with why I don't want to draw it is um, maybe it, maybe it's this is the picture that I want to that I want to sort of modify uh, this one up here because well, maybe I'll just stop. I think I will stop and not make a picture. Uh, I think maybe it's best to just uh, uh, kind of do it sort of analytically, right? Uh, it's impossible for this L1, L2, and L3 um, to meet at P uh, because uh, if they did, um, then L2 would have to equal L3. Maybe I will draw it after all. Because there's this point P and uh, L3 has to contain uh, P3 and P, but also L2 has to contain P3 and P. And that's really sort of what's impossible. What's impossible is that I have this line L2 and I have this line L3, which, has, which have been uh, defined those two lines to go through P3. Well, if uh, P is on L1, L2, and L3, then in particular, P is on L2 and L3. And if P is not P3, then the, contra the visual contradiction here is that we have two distinct lines, two lines we've already proved to be distinct, L2 and L3, which intersect at two distinct points. And that is impossible. All right, that was a lot of talking for ultimately like two additional minutes of a mathematical argument, but perhaps that will help some people, especially those who missed the entire lecture. Goodbye, class.